Well, hey, and welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Today is Wednesday, September 4th, and this is your Team Prosperity meeting. I'm so excited to be here with everybody, and um, just a great time in the business, a great time on our team. Things are really exploding, and I hope things are going amazing for you as well. I appreciate everybody being here. I know how valuable your time is, and I also appreciate the time of everybody that is listening to the recording. I had a few things that I wanted to share before I bring Mike up um, to do his great presentation. The first thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is that today um, we're already in September, and September is Life Insurance Awareness Month. So it's so incredibly important to kind of, you know, share what we know um, with others, and um, this is a great time to do it, a great way to get in front of people in September. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is about urgency. You know, success loves speed, and you see people making it happen on the sprint track. I know we've got a few people that are getting, you know, closer and closer to their goals, and um, things are really, really exploding. So if there's anything that we can help you with, please let us know. Also, keep in mind the 24-hour and the 48-hour rule. When I ask somebody to watch the videos, I ask them, can they watch them now or can they watch them tonight? Um, when I set a tier appointment, I ask them, do you want to do that tomorrow? When I'm scheduling like a tier two, I ask them tonight or tomorrow. Because if you give people a week, they're going to take a month. If you ask them when they want to do it, they're going to say, I want to do it at the end of the month or I want to do it at the end of the year. So urgency, that's going to help you build your business faster. Um, the last thing that I wanted to go over uh, we know that Crump is doing advanced commissions on all their life business. I just wanted to show you all what that looks like and how we can use iGo to write that other business. So if you're in your MyWFG and you go to this red menu, you can go to recruiting and selling, products and providers, and then over to Crump. And uh, it is going to ask me to log back in. This is a very secure website, so that's always nice. Um, let me see, I just had to update the password. All right, so we're clicking here to continue, and this is going to take you into Crump. So we don't need to actually contract with Crump unless we have Crump business. So when we contract now, you're going to see that they've got 200 carriers on this platform. I'm already all contracted with who I need to be as needed. So I would now go to Insure Now, and I just wanted to show you that um, you can start the app, and they have the same in good order application submission, which stands for iGo. So if you go over here to um, self-service and click on I agree, this is going to look very, very familiar for, your, uh, for the people that are doing the consulting. You can start a new case or you can view your cases. Same thing if you start a new case select the state, let's just say California, select all these different kinds of product types. Let's say you're looking for term. You can take a look here and see that all of these companies use IGO as well, AIG, Assurity, uh, Banner, Bright House, Foresters, John Hancock, Lincoln, Securian, Nationwide, Pacific Life, Principal, Protective, Prudential, obviously Transamerica, Mutual of Omaha, so the questions will be a little bit different based on the carrier and then as well as based on the state, uh, but it's going to be pretty easy. So just wanted to show you that in case nobody's seen it before. Um, but those are really the announcements that I had today. Let me get Mike. I can't wait to see his presentation. Give me just one second. All right, you guys, um, we had a couple of announcements on the company meeting last night that two new SVPs in the company, so we're definitely um, proud of those people. But also we want to take a minute to reflect. So what's going on from our team? Uh, what's going on with you guys individually? And like I said, this is a moment of reflection because when you look at people progressing the company, getting to a senior vice president, um, contract level, on the sprint track, 
over a 30 day period, what's the difference between those two people and you guys in this organization? Really the only thing that I see is over a compressed time period, they just outworked you. So you just have to look at this and the activity on the front end will get you the outcomes on the back end. If you do not have enough activity on the front end, you're not gonna have enough outcomes on the back end to accumulate what you need and you're gonna start getting desperate. You're gonna start bringing the wrong people. You're gonna start wasting your time, their time, our time. So you wanna stick to your partner persona. You wanna stick to your business model, your vision, uh, but you just wanna have enough activity to get what you're looking for. One of the things that we're coming up on is the halfway point in the 12 week year. If you are participating, great job. I appreciate you coming in week in, week out to the meetings, uh, giving some feedback, sharing some experiences. It helps, you know, those core group of people that are on those calls um, going forward. If you're not participating in the 12 week year, I just want to take just two or three minutes to go through very quickly how you can kind of piggyback off and possibly get into the next round. All the 12 week year is really doing is allowing that bridge between your vision, and your action plan, those goals to allow you to prioritize your work on a daily and weekly basis. Just look at your actions. We talk about this. The only difference between the two people that were promoted last night and us, if you're not SVP, is just what they were able to accomplish over a 30 day period. And you've got to know what's crucial or critical to getting to your goals and what's not. If a meme is on your activity list for the day and you don't get around to making that meme, but you made all your calls, all your contacts, all your messages, that's okay. If it's flip flop, then, you know, that's not okay. And this just teaches you what to spend your time on, what not to spend your time on. And then the weekly review meetings, the WAM groups, the weekly accountability meetings, you know, it allows us to take a moment to reflect, to get around people uh, who are doing the same exact thing as we are see what's going on, and feed off of that progress or help them along the way if they're not meeting their goals. Our groups are great. One of the things that we need to get better on is the actual metrics, understanding our numbers, presenting those numbers, and getting feedback from the group. And then you always want to reconnect with your vision. Why are you doing this? Why are we getting up? Why are we making activity calls? Why are we doing any of this? That's what's going to keep you motivated. And then like we talk about, what's important, what's not important, tier your activity, and concentrate only on those things that are going to give you the high leverage. Depending on what goals you have, what's going to give me the best possibility or probability to get me there, do that, and the rest of the stuff, if you don't get around to on a day-in, day-out basis, it's okay. When you tier your activity and get the most important stuff done, you're good to go. And then mistakes that people are making, they're trying to change everything at once, not understanding really a strong enough why not tracking your actions, focusing too much on lag measures. Remember, those leading indicators, which is activity, is what you want to focus on. And then trying to do really anything in life alone um, versus having a group to uh, interact with, ask questions, get feedback from, big difference in the success measures. Real quick, guys, just some things that have come up this week in review. I just want to kind of pull up. This is an older uh, slide, but... If you've got people coming in, remember, you might have heard of this six, seven, eight times by now, but the new people coming in, they're going to need your guidance. So understand the value of a system like GMAS for reaching out with people. Understand the value of creating a Gmail signature so that people have the opportunity from that one signature to access more information about you, your brand, the company, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, Snipply, understand how to take those articles that we typically recycle and see if it can be snapped so you can put a banner advertisement on that. Remember, everything that you do, the more activity, the more personal branding, the more messages, the more call to actions that you have out there, the greater likelihood and possibility that it funnels down into lead generation. Also, there's tons of Facebook tools you can use. Remember, guys, Helper is a personal choice. If you want to use Helper, fine. A lot of us do. If you choose not to use it, that's fine as well. Um, it's going to be a personal choice. We don't endorse Helper. Uh, we don't tell you not to use it. It technically violates the terms and guidelines of LinkedIn, um, so that's going to be a personal choice. Uh, the Google Alerts, like we always talk about, if you need articles to recycle and reshare, set up your keywords. If you want to learn about stuff, social media marketing, life insurance, retirement, whatever it might be, set up those alerts as well. It's good for the recycling part, but it's also good for the education part as well.
and that's google.com forward slash alerts, set up the keywords, that material will be directly delivered to your inbox daily. Light shot, you need a screen capture tool. My handwriting's terrible. If I sit through a webinar, it's a lot easier for me to just capture the, the, the screens there instead of writing everything down. Same thing with, you know, copying, pasting stuff. It's a lot easier if you have this tool. Uh, it makes a very efficient uh, in terms of time management uh, for you. Track your email. If you're sending an email to a partner and it's open 13 seconds later, let's you know, hey, it was delivered. This person's on top of it. If you deliver or if you send an email to a partner and it's open 10 days later, partner's really not on top of this business. Same thing, same thing goes with the clients as well. If you're sending them a illustration or proposal, quote summary, um, you want to know that it was received, so you know when to follow up. This is going to let you know, A, it wasn't lost in cyberspace, B, it was delivered, open, and like I said, that's a great time management and a follow-up tool as well. Uh, Google Docs, if you need HTML quality looking emails, Google Docs is a great place to produce those, and we do have some templates that all you have to do is you change the URL. And then finally, Bitly, if you're out there and you're trying to get things across the other side in messages, um, you'll notice that sometimes those URLs are very, very long. Bitly will go and shorten that down so it's a more clear, concise URL that you can post, uh, text, whatever it is that you need to do. Another question came up this week. Uh, you know, they, they said they understood all the financial reasons that somebody would want to be a business owner self-employed, but they were talking about, you know, when I'm talking to self-employed people, you know, what is some other big differences that I can go through? And this is the biggest difference. If you own a practice or if you own a job as a practice, you're self-employed, as your business builds, uh, your quality of life tends to go down. So as your business is getting better, the quality of life is starting to decrease because more hours, more energy, more resources, more time, everything is devoted to that practice. It's basically all on you or all on you and a very small staff. So outside of the leveraged income and the financial reasons that you would want to be a business owner with passive income, also you're able to keep a quality of life as your business grows and as it scales. So that's the answer to that. Somebody also asked me about the keys to this business. You've got to look at it as your ability. It doesn't matter if you're a marketer, consultant, if you're both of them together, you want to have an organized plan for personal commissions. You want to have an organized plan of how to effectively use our assembly line to benefit you and the other people that you're working with on that assembly line. You want to have a plan of action to build and manage a base shop, have that base shop create other independent digital agencies. Uh, you want to understand our contract commissions, how you earn 126, how you build up uh, to what you uh, see on the payouts. Uh, you want to also understand and appreciate the 40% advance on submission, 60% on issue. Somebody coming in can make instant income in this business, whereas a lot of traditional models, there's a very long lag time. Uh, renewal commissions, uh, understand how those are paid directly and on the overrides. Understand uh, how you need to license yourself in certain situations or not, depending on if it's direct sales or overrides. On the overrides, understand, I don't know how old this slide is, there's, you know, at any given time, a number of hot states, meaning those are the states that require the license and sometimes the appointment to get that override. If it's not considered a hot state, you can actually do override business in that state without the actual license. And then understand the importance of writing good business, having a great persistency, having little chargebacks. Listen, guys, you're not going to be in a business like this and have zero chargeback. So understand the natural progression of your business cycle. Some people will lose their job. Some people will have something come up where they either do not want the product anymore, no longer can afford the product. Uh, but understand, if you're writing good business, that percentage is going to be relatively small. Don't write bad business and don't force people into things they're not, un they're not sure about. Also came up this week, and I just want to make sure real quickly, we've talked about this before, one of the biggest differences in IUL and whole life is how does your client or how do you access the money if you're the client? Well, in a whole life, if you're borrowing for cash, if you're borrowing for the purposes of paying, paying that premium, uh, they're usually charging you 5 to 8% on your own money. Uh, for example, in the Transamerica IUL, the first 10 years that you have 
the product, if you need a loan, basically, you know, boils down to a 0.75 interest rate, three quarters of 1% after your 10 interest-free loan. So how does our client access the money? Very, very important part of this. So I just wanted to bring that up again for you guys. And also, those people who have come to me lately and want to be a consultant, working with some of you, understand that if you're asking somebody to pay more um, for something versus a less expensive option, you have to talk about value over cost, and you have to show them the difference. Okay, this is an option, and this is an option A and B. This is what option, happens in option A. This is what happens in option B. Build value, educate your client. That's how you get higher premium. Okay, so that was a little bit of some things that have come up in the past week. Now, what I want you guys to understand is you, you don't see this, you don't hear this in your home office, but there is a tidal wave or a tsunami of disruption happening all around us. And in this industry, uh, that means a lot of money. So what you have to understand is even though you're in that quiet home office working away, there's a storm brewing, and you're on the forefront of that storm in this industry when you put that much money on the move. If you do this correctly, establish yourself as a leader, can have other people under you that you're leading with digital franchises, this is an unlimited opportunity. So you're looking for people that understand our vision, that want to do something different, that want to step out of the herd mentality and want to establish themselves as a disruptive entrepreneur in this business model, applying it to this industry. The rest of the people who don't understand the cash flow quadrant, don't share our vision, don't have the motivation, don't have any excitement about changing what they're doing right now, those are people that we don't want. You don't get paid to recruit. You're looking for the people like us. We're not everywhere, but we are out there. You're going to have to push constant growth, ongoing training, the desire to keep learning, educating yourself, getting better, and just always being a student of the craft. As a leader, you've got to instill that in your group, and you've always got to be pushing growth, education, activity, accountability. If there's something that you can do to help your partners get to their goals, grow their business, it's a core responsibility as a leader to push them towards success. Now, people sometimes are not always going to want to hear what you have to say, but if it's important and you put it in a, a positive tone, you don't berate or belittle people, you're always positively pushing people in the right direction. And you get to hire and attract top talent by understanding that knowledge is the new currency. So the more that you can educate this, uh, yourself, the more that you can put yourself out there as an influencer, as someone who has a level of expertise in your field, that's how you get top talent to start interacting with you. Have something to offer them. Learn as much as you can. Teach others. People will be attracted to someone. We always talk about this. On the forefront, they're buying into your brand and their belief and your ability to get them to you know, their goals, their uh, metrics of success, whatever it is they want out of their life. If they feel that you can do that, the back end virtual financial, the platform, the digital assets, the partnerships, it's going to allow them a real avenue and roadmap to get there. The daily activity sheet. One of the things that I think Thomas and Bill, um, outside of the activity, was the accountability with the Tiger program. So this is our activity sheet. Whether you're using Helper or whether you're doing this, you know, manually on LinkedIn, you know, how many invitations are you sending out? You know, the thank you message, thank you for connecting, we consider that the pipeline or the opening to the pipeline that will get a lot more LinkedIn communication. So that starts the pipeline, you know, intro marketing emails, total text messages. We just want to make sure that you're using all your methods of communication, including text, um, those email ones follow-up emails, calls, prospects, reach, ABC calls. Now, if you guys have any questions, if anybody's out there doing things that they think should be included on this sheet, we're always open to suggestions. We want to build an, account, uh, an activity and accountability sheet that incorporates all that you do. But remember, it can't be a mile long. So we've got to keep it concise and compressed. But let us know if you want us to add things to this. So the quarter, October, September, October, or as you have people coming in, the 100-day track for them, the sprint, um, you know, we're looking for a build-out of three direct, 10 in a base shop, 43,200 issued points, which is about, it was not as about, it's 3,600 in premium, 
And then you've got leg requirements and not everything can come from one leg. Now, if you do this all on your own direct, you can count 100% of that. Um, this is not pie in the sky numbers that are hard to hit. You guys just need to get active. You need to stay accountable to yourself and you really need to get aggressive in the marketplace. Remember, you're talking about a trillion dollar industry. Other people in this industry are going to be aggressive. Match that aggression. You have competitive advantages. It's going to give you a really a place in the market unlike anybody else's. Three is what you want to count on. Three direct per month to you will build your agency and that will eventually build other digital agencies. I was talking to a partner coming in and he was talking about uh, what to do. And I laid this out for him. Now, if you're going to shoot for three and you hit two, that's fine. This guy wants to shoot for five a month. And then if he you know, comes close to that at four, he crushes the original number. So if you're okay with setting high goals for yourself and they don't intimidate you, go ahead and do that. Because if you get close to those high goals, you'll probably crush the other number that you were looking at. So always understand, what am I going to do each month personally? Direct recruits, direct points, and then what do I expect from the rest of my team? And that's how you're going to learn how to forecast growth, income, revenue, whatever it might be in your agency. And then all you want to do, and this is very, very important, I had to learn this the hard way, is take whatever you have now, and this is just an arbitrary number out there, but let's say that you've got an agency that's being built where you've got 10% of those people coming in that are all in. They're active, they're contributing, they're all about this. You got 10% that maybe don't even finish the tier system. They drop out. And you've got 80% somewhere in the middle, just kind of wandering, drifting. Our job, in my opinion, is to squeeze that middle. Get more people all out, get more people all in, and less drift in the middle. If you can do that, if you can get up to a 20, 30% all in status, and your business growth, you're going to have incredible results in this business. And it's going, to, it's going to crush the industry standard where they have about a 90% fail rate. So I quit. This is what, you know, you're going to see. And you see your agency start to build up and some people leave it, it's natural. You're not going to have a 100% retention rate. And if you think you are coming in, you're going to be deeply, deeply, deeply disappointed. The process of hiring, the process of training, supporting to see who's going to be left, and who's going to work, that's just the process of what we do. I think a lot of people come in, and from the very beginning, after training, when it's time to actually work, they realize this is going to be work, and they just give up. They think A lot of people think they're just going to sign up, uh, everything starts to work, and automatically, twice a week, we're going to start getting direct deposits. Well, it's crazy to us that that sounds like that, but you have to be, get, you have to be able to get rid of those people early on in the conversation. If you can get rid of that person in a tier one confirm call instead of a tier five or a tier six partner training, saves you a lot of time, energy, and resources. Learn how to read people, bring in the right people, and just be brutally honest. I tell people all the time, these are the reasons that you would want to join this company and be a part of my organization. These are the reasons that you would not. And I think being brutally honest with people is something that is missing from the marketplace and will give you that trust and credibility factor. If you're coming out saying, hey, I would not want to join this company under these reasons. It's hard work. It's a time commitment. You know, it's all on you in the beginning. So those are some things that outside of our advantages can really help you sort through the people. You want to be a problem solver. So what's your audience's problem? And what are the solutions that you have to that? If you get in the habit of understanding the perceived problems from the other side, Offering solutions, not with direct products, not with direct business opportunities, but the benefits of that business opportunity or the benefits of that product, you're going to find yourself open to a lot more conversations. We always talk about this bottom of the pyramid, and we're always looking for ways to get that rapport and establish the trust and credibility as instantly in the marketplace as we can. We try new things all the time. Um, what I'm going to go through today is just a little bit about organic lead generation you know, peppered in with some paid advertisement. But the first thing that you can do to take control of the marketplace is understand that when people start talking to you, well, I'll let you know if I want to join your organization, you say, hold on, there's an interview process. We're not joining. We're actually offering a position, and you're being hired into this organization. As soon as you adopt, adopt that mindset, process becomes a lot more clear, becomes a lot more easier, 
and you start to sort through the, the numbers in a very um, efficient way. I always evaluate your hires, like we just talked about a few slides ago. What's working? What's not working? Why? And through time, you get a better and better and better and better and more clear picture of who you're looking for. The better idea of who you're looking for uh, gets you in a better position to go out and find those people. Where are they? Where do they hang out with online? What groups are they members of? And you can easily identify them. Now, another thing that comes up quite often is the part-time entrepreneur, if they're not prepared for what they're going to have to do, it is a waste of time for both sides. Now, we champion the cause of part-timers, and we have a lot of people in our organization that are part-timers. A lot of successful people in the organization have started part-time, but they need to know going in that to have a full-time job plus working this business, uh, it's going to be a sacrifice for a period of time. Are they prepared to make that sacrifice in order to build a business where a job is no longer needed? Because after working a full eight, nine-hour shift, come home, it's a lot easier to sit in front of the couch, watch TV, you know, just scroll through Facebook, and just waste time. It is a commitment that they have to make sure they're prepared going in over a period of time. It's called the bridge. If they're not willing to make that sacrifice in the beginning, it is a, uh, just, it's a dead partnership. So if you're doing intro emails, if you're doing marketing emails, one of the things that you need to understand, we talked about this, I don't know, a month or so ago, different ways that you can stand out. Simple things like putting emojis in the subject line get a better open rate. So you have to stand out. Your headlines have to be catchy, grabby, make people open the email. Remember, that's half the battle. And then make it interesting enough to drive traffic to a landing page, website, whatever it is that you're trying to do for the call to action. Don't get too involved with doing emails that are specifically about the business opportunity and the product. What you're trying to do is provide value, educate the other side into opening conversations. Also, the intro calls. Now, these work really, really, really well um, if you work them correctly. If you go in with the mindset, I'm going to pitch this person, you're going to find that the conversations don't go well, and you're going to end up hating these calls. What you need to learn how to do is ask a few questions, be able to read that person based on what they're telling you, and the responses in both their language and the manner they're talking. Simple questions like, what do you do? Well, people are going to tell you. People love to talk about themselves. And from that, you know, people sometimes say, hey, I, you know, I just got a job promotion at work, really excited. Or, oh, well, when I'm not at the, working at the job, I hate. So this is going to let you know, are they happy? Are they not happy? And that information will allow you to start from your side, getting you to a point where you can funnel the conversation to where you want to go. Anything exciting happening in your life? You know, did they just get married? Did they just buy a house? Did they just have a kid? That could lead to some um, product conversations when it's your time to talk. Um, how's the year been so far? It allows them the op opportunity to reflect, still talking about themselves. And you can see, are they meeting their goals? Are they stuck? Are they looking for something different? Do they have any big goals or plans for 2020? What's their vision? Are they okay if they're stuck, remaining stuck? Or is it one of those people that's looking to win and they're looking for an avenue or a platform to allow them to come in work with people who are going to help them uh, change their life. Is there anything that I can help you with right now professionally? Now, remember, when you're doing an intro call, you may have looked at their profile. They may have looked at your profile, but honestly, they probably didn't. So this is a lead-in question. It's very important. Is there anything I can do to help you right now professionally? Well, a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm not sure. What do you do? That opens the door for you to speak and for you to lead into a directed narrative. So where do you want to take the conversation based on the information they gave you? Are you trying to spin off a client video, trying to spin off a uh, business video? Are you trying to spin off an f and directly? What is it about what they told you that you can use to your advantage to try to direct the conversation? Now, sometimes absolutely nothing comes out of these intro calls. There's not really anything that you can do to help them at this point, and they're not really looking for anything. That's okay. It still provides that networking opportunity that later down the road, they may refer you, they may come back to you for something that came up in the conversation. Also, the surveys. Now, I want you guys to understand that a survey is a great way to get a contact lead form. So you've got to understand the differences in the surveys. If you're, for example, an agent, 
um, or if you're looking and talking to agents, then you have to understand how to get in front of them. And one of the ways that I think that you can really get in front of these people, financial professionals, is to say, hey, I'm working on a publication, I'm working on an article, I'm working on market research, whatever it is that you want to say, and I've got a really quick survey about how people in the industry are marketing or how people in the industry are using or not using digital, uh, trends in this, or whatever it is that you want. All you're trying to do, get some preliminary information, get some contact information, and once again, have a reason to follow up. Hey, I really appreciate you filling out my market research survey. Um, those were great answers. I got a quick question for you or whatever it is that you want to use in the follow-up. If you are looking at, if you're posting job postings, if you're pulling resumes, if you're looking on a platform like LinkedIn for people who are searching, looking for opportunity, another survey is candidate pre-screens. Hey, I may or may not be able to help you um, fill out this pre-screening um, survey and let me see what you're looking for and let me see if I've got anything that matches. Those are good. General public, you know, we were releasing that book with the national media tour. So once again, we're doing some follow-up market research. Can you help us? Um, on retirement, financial literacy, smart money. Once again, getting answers back on these surveys that you can potentially flip into conversations. If it's an entrepreneur survey, just, you know, doing a, a market research on the 21st century entrepreneur types, ways they're entrepreneur, challenges they're facing, and then warm market. You know, hey, I'm doing market research for a promotion at work or a new division we're opening. Whatever it is that you want to say, can you help me out with a quick survey? General market information. You know, do they know the rule of 72? Have they bought a house in the last seven years? You know, all of these things that can, once again, give you two things. Information and to follow up on, ask, you know, some follow-up questions. And then phone number and, and uh, contact name so that you've got basically turning a survey into a lead form. All of this, guys, is organic. It takes a little bit of work to put this together. Once you've got the surveys in place, it's about pushing enough of them out, getting enough responses, following up. And finally, landing pages. Now, this is something that we talked about before. Uh, this is something that can really help you because as an entrepreneur, what would you be interested in? If I came to you right now and said, hey, I've got a free report on, you know, whatever, what is it you're interested in? Is it how to, you know, get Facebook leads? how to increase your email marketing response rate, uh, how to use Instagram for marketing your business, all of these things that we would probably be interested in, other people are as well. So people you're looking for probably have the same needs or the same interest as you. So you lead with value, you frame the conversation, and once again, you give a reason to follow up with confidence. What I do is I have a separate email. And then, for example, if somebody sends me something, hey, how to use Facebook marketing, how to use LinkedIn marketing, whatever it might be, I'll, most of the time they require an email address. So I'll put in that email address, get the report, I'll look at the report. And sometimes, you know, I'll recycle the information, not taking it and giving out, but you need to rewrite it, put it on your own format. Um, but this is zero compliance issues. There's no product information. There's no virtual financial information. You're giving people information that can possibly help them build their business, but internally what you're doing is you're giving them a reason to be in front of the phone for a follow-up so you can say, hey, did you get through that report? You know, was there any value there? And that can help open the conversations that can lead to business partners on the backside. So we're going to start working on some of those reports, distributing those to you guys, and helping you build landing pages so you can get those out. Um, you know, I just told you guys, you know, collect the relevant reports, rewrite, recycle, repurpose for your own needs. That'll help you. Um, and then as you're speaking to people, if they're in the industry or if they're in sales, remember the way that you can instantly put yourself as a position of power in the conversation, ask questions. What's your cost of acquisition of a client? What is a client really worth to you and your business? What's your return on investment, whether you're buying leads directly from a vendor or whether you have your own marketing, what's your ROI? And then finally, what type of training and support are you receiving? The first three right there usually stump people. They don't know. So you can say, well, those are really big, important metrics. We really go through that um, uh, intensely in our organization. That's something that I think that if you take anything out of my conversation, make sure you take those out and make sure you're understanding what you're spending, what's that returning, how to grow your business. And finally, the fourth one down here, we found being in this business for a few years that the training and support and most other models out there is absolutely horrible. They just throw you out there. Whatever happens, happens. We 
are dedicated to the people who are actually working this business. And a lot of people out there, that's something they're looking for. So outside of the, you know, the black and white numbers of a business, understand there's gray areas too that people are struggling with. They're not getting the training support. We definitely offer that here. And then finally, if you're, you know, posting out there, whether it's job posting, I call them classified ads, but they're more like business opportunity ads, whether you're pulling resumes from banks or social media postings, understand the difference in what you're doing. So a job posting is specific and direct in nature and purpose. It's job language. Now, if you're using Indeed, ZipRecruiter and Indeed, understand they have terms, rules, guidelines that you have to abide by. Uh, you need to make sure that you do that. So if you're thinking about posting on one of these, let us know first and we'll help you. The classified ads and the business opportunity, they can be more general information, opportunity language, go more into, you know, a franchise type language or distribution language, more about the exact model that we do have. Now, the resume banks, if you're pulling resumes, that's outbound. And that's to drive eyes on your videos for follow up Remember, more eyes on your assets, more eyes watching the videos, that's more follow-up and that's more outcome. And the social media postings are more about brand awareness. So I really want you guys to concentrate on your personal brand, your brand awareness, and building that audience that you can engage with. And then on the back end, you have things to introduce. No matter what you're doing, uh, this is not only important for when you're talking to agents, financial service reps, salespeople, understand that if you're spending money, what that's doing for you. Do not blindly throw money at anything, but especially advertising, whether it's a lead vendor, or whether you're doing your own marketing, if you spend $1,000 and return nothing, you just kind of press pause, the brakes, figure out what happened. If you spend $1,000 and return $4,000 in income for you, that's something that confidently you should be able to repeat that as long as it continues to work. So know your numbers. It's going to help you build your business. And when your partners come in and they want advice from you, you're not just sitting there with nothing to offer them. And the lead vendor, you know, we have dealt with lead vendors. Some have been okay. Some have been terrible. That's the feedback that I get from a lot of you guys. So if you're dealing with a lead vendor, understand that you might be the only person in your organization right now, but you are a part of a very large organization. And if these lead vendors are good, we can form strategic partnerships with them. I will not talk to any lead vendor for you guys that you need help with. If somebody is not willing to give you a little taste of what they do, that's usually a bad leading indicator. If they want you to sign long contracts, put up a lot of money, bad leading indicator. If you have something of value, you're usually willing to give it out on a small sample to get the rest of the business in. So once again, if you guys are talking to lead vendors, you need somebody to come in and kind of go through the BS meter with them, uh, we can definitely do that for you guys. And then understand, one of the things that – I know we always talk about, you know, everything's the stars are in alignment for us. It's kind of cliche. Um, but – if you look at this business model and where we were supposed to be right now and the expected growth over the next 48 months, and then you see things like, you know, the, uh, the book being released, the national media tour, everything is just really coming together to give you guys an enormous amount of opportunity over the next 12 to 18 months to take a big problem that we have in this country, financial literacy, that most people realize is a big problem, um, address that, get in front of as many as 100 million Americans with the message, and then on the back end for our partners, take that, couple with where you want to be today in this business environment, which is e-commerce, online business, digital, combine both those together, and it's a grand slam. The online business opportunity, when you look at other people trying to build online businesses, most of them, they do not have legs, they don't have, it's not going to be around forever, or they're playing some type of a middleman where they're trying to get little percentages or little amounts of money off transactions. What you want to do is put yourself in the forefront of the client interaction. And that's exactly what we do. We represent an incredible business opportunity for the right people who understand this. Simple things, you know, rule of 72. You know, we talk about this. Uh, this is a great conversation opener. Do you understand the rule of 72? Well, federal re Reserves since I made this, I don't know, a couple months ago, cut interest rates again. You got people in money market, CD accounts. What are they earning? They're earning nothing. How long does it take their money to double? Well, 67, 86, 112 years on CDs. And then uh, savings rate, money market, 0 0.09, 800 years. So this is the type of stuff that's 
easy, in my opinion, to go out there and talk to people about. You're educating them. You're giving something of value that allows you to continue the conversation. And that brings us to the common market. This is something that Doug Jones went over on uh, the last meeting. I think it was Saturday. This, I think, is one of the greatest ways that you guys can confidently go out there with a message that is clear, concise, it's framed, it gives people a reason to do what you're asking them to do. And that's our How Money Works Nationwide Financial Literacy Campaign. You know, we're ranked, USA, only 16th in the world in financial literacy. American families are paying the price. So we're about to launch a nationwide financial literacy campaign that will reach 100 million Americans over the next year. Why? Why is our company doing what we're doing? Well, we just answered you. This is why we're looking for people who are interested in management and management trainee programs or opportunities to help us absorb the growth. This has come straight from Doug's presentation. Endless targeted leads for free. The common market is just something that you have as a loose commonality with the other person. School, sports, occupation, military, same church, civic group, et cetera. You're just giving them a reason to talk to you, break the ice on the front end, so you can get in front of them, and then basically all we're looking for is a small bridge of connection, something in common that will at least buy you two minutes. And that two minutes is plenty of time to get into a little small script with a, enough time to figure out from their side, you know, are they interested in what you have, which is basically some overview material, or are they not? We made a uh, landing page to go along with that script so it's easy for you guys to get this information out. And that's going to allow you to have more and more and more Tier 1 ABCs, which if you lead with this type of a presentation, probably going to get a lot more pivots. People are going to say, I, uh, you guys, mission is great. I applaud what you're doing. You know, I've already got, um, you know, this going on, this going on. And it's not necessarily they're not qualified. It's not that they don't have the money to come in. They just don't have the time. Those are great pivots. Understand the difference between a good and a bad pivot. Don't tie the consultant's calendar and time up with stuff that you know will never be uh, any possibility or probability of product sale. These people may need to get stuff done. They may want to get stuff done, but they have to have the rest. You know, it could be suitable. Can they afford it? And that's a big time or a big factor. If somebody doesn't have $200 to visit this business opportunity, they're not a good pivot for a client. And then another way that leads come out organically, guys, is if you do the four and the six correctly as a manager, you're going to help your business partner to learn the CRM, and there's going to be 20-plus leads in there that you guys can potentially contact using the common market script, uh, using whatever it is that you want. And the probability is if the new partner does what they're supposed to, the manager does what they're supposed to, there's probably going to be something in there, somebody interested in the business, somebody interested in the product, which gets your partner paid quickly organizational growth, organizational points, and once again, more organic growth. If it's a client, then we're going to ask for referrals. If it's a partner that ends up coming in that's qualified and hired, there's a whole new launch 20 coming out of that. So understand how the business cycle works. Understand how you get leads. Understand how that compounds on top of itself. You can do this organically with no money spent, but you got to work hard. We talked about helper. It's your choice whether you want to use it or not. Some people use it. Some people don't. If you are using it, step one, step two, and a continuous cycle of step three is a very automated, easy-to-understand process. And basically, you're personally inviting people. You're thanking them. You're offering them a couple value-based messages before a personal brand message, business, product, however it is that you want to go, and then in the middle with these value messages where you're building that rapport, trust, credibility, you can use Snipply to try to get some early lead generation off that. And then once again, you know, you've got a, a list, let's call it business owner list. You've collected a number of profiles. You've got a personal invitation, a thank you, couple value, business intro, product intro. That concludes the upfront. Now what you've got is you've got these files that you can periodically go back once every 30 days, once every 60 days, and get new messages out. So what's your story? This is something that I think that a lot of you guys have great stories. I don't think you're telling it correctly. So what is it about you? Uh, what's your story? And really when you look at virtual financial, when you're talking to other people, a lot of people want to know. They might not be telling you, but they want to know, hey, why are you in this company? And when you're able to tell somebody why you joined, 
what your experience is, what your vision is. Um, it attracts people, like-minded people. And then you're able to get that story out in a lot of different platforms and a lot of different avenues and ways that will reach your target market. So once you understand your vision, once you understand your story, once you understand your personal brand, it becomes a lot easier to build around that brand and get the word out. We always talk about activity is important, um, you know, building your audience is important, but engagement is extremely important. Uh, two ways. You're going to have to produce content, which is a great way to get that level of expertise, influence your audience. Or if you're not ready to do that yet, you've got to engage with it. And you want to find, for example, on LinkedIn, heavily trafficked posts that are getting a lot of activity, join in the conversation. It's one of the best ways to do it until you get comfortable producing your own content. And then out there, guys, remember, in 2019, 2020, 2021, You've got to have a wow factor, and it's got to hit somebody right over the head. So I, got, I want you to think about your personal brand, what you have to offer, what's your wow factor, and go out there and really get that in the open marketplace in a way that is fun, entertaining, educational, uh, and it's aesthetically pleasing. Remember, if things look good, the images, video is a great way to get it out. People are going to be more apt to take a look at your message. If your image is not well, um, you know, sometimes that is the killer of the whole presentation. If you don't have a good image out there that stops people from scrolling, they're not gonna see the rest of what you have to offer. And remember, there's can be like a little secret to what you do. It doesn't always have to be all posted on social media, every aspect of your business. If you hold some things tight and kind of tease people with information, it helps you open up the conversation. So you've got something special, keep it close to you, give teaser information that you know has the other side reach back out to you and say, hey, I saw your post or I saw your message. Um, you know, I, I got a question for you. Our disruption is we're changing the way financial services agencies are built, operated, and managed. To the right people with the right vision, that is a big statement. When you are changing this size industry, the right people will get excited about that. If they don't get excited about it, probably not the right partner to bring in. And you want to have a vision. Your vision wants to you know, be able to go not just to the next month or the next year, but what are you building here? Well, we're building something that if you look out 10 years from now, if we're looking 2029 and 2030, what does your business look like? Well, if you do this correctly, you're going to have an enormous business that you probably already walked away from where you're making some weekly or monthly speeches to large groups, but essentially you've laid down the groundwork, you've done what you need to do, and You've got passive income coming in from multiple directions. What Steve Siebel, Tom Matthews, the book, The Media Tour has done for us is it's taken what we normally do, our internet marketing, with search marketing, all of these things that we normally do, and now it's taken digital marketing with the TV, the radio, all of these things that Siebel is going to go out and do for us. You guys are in the best position with the virtual platform to take advantage and benefit from that. So understand that we're hitting on all cylinders and understand that if you use this book release and this tour correctly, um, you are going to get immense advantage and, um, and activity and contacts and conversations and partners and clients out of this if you use it correctly. We're bridging that gap between digital marketing and social media. This book tour uh, or this book release, the media tour, is really helping us kind of merge all these things together and things are ready to really rock and roll, you guys. Uh, we have the ability to reach a lot of people, and you have the ability to uh, produce an amazing customer experience. Remember, customer doesn't have to be only client. It can be partner as well. You develop an experience for potential partner or potential client that is different, new, innovative from everything else they've seen. Guess what? You've got your um, ability to stand on the forefront, differentiate yourself, and with an innovative model, you don't have to compete anymore. It's a lot easier when you don't have to compete with everybody else in this large industry. So understand what you're building. Differentiate yourself. Make yourself fresh. Keep yourself authentic. People are going to read through fakeness and go out there and create an amazing experience for people. Beating the odds. We're going to close with a couple of slides on how do I beat the odds here. Well, first of all is you've got to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, this isn't something where you're going to post and then your phone blows up. Not it at all. You've got to be aggressive in the marketplace. You've got to make the 
initial interactions, the activity, the conversations, communication, there's a sleeping giant inside of you. When you wake it up and when you start to feel, uh, find success in this company, that giant's going to feed off that. You're going to get better and better and better at what you do, more confident. The skill set of having discomfort in your life is actually a huge advantage. I know that we don't look at it that way, but you cannot skip the, set of the steps to success. We talked about this before. Lottery winners, there was no process. There was no journey. They were handed a lot of money. Many times their life is far worse later down the road um, after the lottery win than before. It's a process. Trust the process. Understand it's not an overnight event. The key to learning is movement. So we can talk about things. We can read about things. But the easiest way to learn, for example, how to swim, is jump in the pool. So the easiest way you're going to learn this business is to jump in, start having activity, start making mistakes, learning from those so you get past the learning curve a lot quicker. And then repetition. If you continue to do what you want to do every single day or what you need to do, uh, repeat the same thing, get better, master it, guess what? You're going to have a blueprint for success that worked for you. And with confidence, you can say to your partners, if you are willing to do this, this is what is on the backside. Staying small costs you. You know, if you're in here, you might as well have big goals. What's your money goals? What's your dream goals? Uh, what's your overall life goals? Think big. Unselfish people grow their business. Selfish people do not. Make sure that you understand what that means. You can only give away from a surplus. You're making 40 grand a year and you spend 40 grand a year. Your ability to help other people is nothing. You can give a little bit of time away, but if you are spending 80 grand a year and you're making 250, guess what? There's some room in there where you can get behind charitable causes, you can help out less fortunate people, and you can put your money to work as a tool for the better good, um, you know, instead of not having access to that type of capital. And the world is yours. All you've got to do is take action. If there's one thing that I got out of last night's meeting is that the two new SVPs, they just took action. They were accountable to the process. They were dedicated to it. And they just worked extremely hard. If you work hard on this platform, you will be rewarded in a big way. So that is all we've got for the day. I think we made pretty good time here. I'm going to end the recording. If you guys have anything to discuss now, um, by all means, open floor. If not, we're available on an individual basis.